In this video, I'll show you how to build a really quick front-end admin panel or GUI for your Supabase instance in about 10 minutes. Check it out. So you're probably familiar with Supabase. It's the Firebase alternative. It's open source. It's built on Postgres. It makes authentication, APIs, uh, general data management really simple. And it's been cool to build this admin panel on it because Retool makes the whole front end side of things really simple. So when you combine Retool and Supabase, you really get two products operating in their superpowers that uh, make it really quick and easy to build apps. So it's really exciting. I hope you like this tutorial and let's dive right in. So to start, this is the app that we're going to build. It's uh, an admin panel that will allow us to create, read, update, and delete different entries within our database. So we can tab through data, we can see some of the sample data, we can delete items, and on the right hand side there's a panel for creating and editing. And all of this data is populated with data from the Retool REST API generator, which is a helpful tool to generate mock data. And from there we've inserted this data into a new table in our Supabase instance, which we can see here. So now that we have this data, let's go back to our Retool home screen and create a new app. And from here, we're taken into the Retool Builder. On the right-hand side, you have a UI panel, which will allow you to place different components like tables and buttons. On the bottom is the Query panel, where you can create queries and interface with your databases and APIs. And on the left-hand panel is the Data Browser, which allows you to see all of the properties and methods shared across your app. So to start, let's get some data into our app. And to do this, we'll go into the query panel and click create new resource. And from here, we can see all of the different databases and API integrations that are pre-built by Retool. We'll choose the Postgres database because Supabase is built on top of Postgres and has a direct Postgres interface. You can find the connection details within your Supabase instance under the settings and database section and then plug in the Supabase settings into the Retool interface and click Test Connection. Once you've done this, you'll be able to write standard SQL queries against your database. I've already set up one here and it's called Supabase PG. So now we can write a simple SQL select all from our table and we have a little bit of help on the right hand side in the schema inspector that will show us the different tables that exist within our Postgres database. And so we'll choose the test table and save and run this and preview it. And we can see a preview of the data from our Supabase instance. Next, we will save the query and change the name to something more useful like list users. Opening the right hand panel now, we can drag a table onto the canvas and see that it's automatically populated with the data from this query. All across Retool, you can write JavaScript within the curly brackets. And here we can see that we are referencing the listusers.data, and the value of that reference shows up in the green box below. You can also open the left-hand data browser and see all of the other properties for these queries and the components in your UI. So next, let's change this table to compact mode so we can show more data. Now let's give our app a title. So to do this, we will drop a text component in and move it to the left-hand side. And in the value field, we can type markdown using the double hashtag and type our title. And now on the right-hand side, we want to build some sort of section for creating and editing users in our database. So to do this, we will drop in a tabbed container and create two tabs, one for creating new users and the other for editing users by updating their plans. Okay, so now we have this helpful section on the right hand side, but we need to get some input fields into this tab. So to do this, we will use the form component and it has this really helpful tool, which allows you to generate form fields from a resource. So to do this, we will select our Supabase PG resource and you can see that it automatically pulls in the different column names and expected input types. All of these look good except for the plan type. And for this, we are going to change it to a select 
And we also don't need the ID field to be required since it is auto-generated on the back end. So clicking generate form, we now have our form on the right hand side and it's all linked up to our query already. So we can see we have a new form one submit to test query and this is a GUI mode query. And so this gives us a really simple way to apply actions to our SQL database without writing SQL. So we can see that this is inserting a record and it's just referencing the form one dot data, which will be a set of key values from our form. So next let's insert some test values into our form and create a fake user. And when we get to the plan field, we'll see there's no items in the select dropdown. So we need to insert the values of the different plans for our users. And once we've done that, we can select a plan and we don't need the ID field. So let's go ahead and delete that and let it be auto generated on the back end. And now we're ready to click submit and generate this user. And we see that it has successfully been generated. So we can refresh our table and scroll to and find the new my test user. So the form is working and we're able to create new entries in the database. And now let's build the functionality for updating a user's plan. So to do this, we'll click on the update plans tab and we need to first add a title to this section and we'll use Markdown again to format the title. And this time we want to reference the email from the selected row in the table. And so to do this, we can type in curly braces and reference the table one dot selected row and then reference the specific email from that row. And now when the user clicks on a row in the table, they'll see the email for that user in the update plan section. And next we need to add the plan update dropdown box to this field. So we'll just copy it over from the form from the create new user tab. And lastly, we need a submit button that will send this updated data to the database. Okay, now we are ready to set up the query. So to do this, we're going to create it manually by duplicating the list users query, change the name to update user, and we'll do this in the GUI mode as well. We'll select our test table, and for our action, we're going to choose update an existing record, and we're going to reference the email of that user to locate the record that we want to update. And so to do this, we'll reference that selected row email again. And then we will apply a chain set, which we can then uh, reference the plan value. So we'll select the plan value in the chain set and then reference the new dropdown that we just added to our update plans tab. And so referencing the select two dot value, we now have the values mapped in correctly. And lastly, when we update a user's plan, we want to refresh the table view of those users with the most up-to-date data. So to do this, we will add an event handler with a success trigger and tell it to run the list users query again, which will refresh the table. So let's save this query and now we're ready to select a new plan for a user, but we haven't linked our button in to the new query we just created yet. So to do this, we'll select the button and scroll down on the right hand panel to the event handlers section. And we want to set this button so that when it's clicked, it will trigger the update users query. But there's lots of other actions you can do here, like running scripts, going to specific URLs or firing some fun confetti. So we'll specify the query being the update user query. And now let's add some fun confetti to this as well. So let's select a user from the table and update their plan as a test. And when we click update user, the query runs and we're greeted with some really fun confetti. And let's test this out one more time, updating this user's plan and clicking update user and looks like we're good. So now we have our reading, our updating, our creating new users, and we need to add in uh, at the ability to delete a user. So to do this, we will duplicate our update user query and we'll just change the name to delete user. And for this one, we'll change the action type to delete a record. 
and we'll use the same email reference for the filter and we will keep our success trigger so that it will update the table. And that's all we need to do for this query. And lastly, selecting the table, we need to add an action button. So to do this, we'll select the table, scroll down to actions and create a new action. We'll call this the delete button and we'll link this button to the delete user query. And now we can test out the button, pressing the delete button and we'll see that this row has now been deleted. And that wraps up our admin panel. We have the ability to create, read, update, and delete users from our table. So let's uh, just give this a little bit of styling to make it look a little nicer. So we'll change the header background color as well as some of the other headers. So now we're looking good. There's a few more little things that would be helpful to know. Uh, you can also bring in your own JavaScript libraries in the scripts and styles section. Uh, you can also specify custom CSS here if you want to go further on styling. In this menu, you'll also find uh, revision history. So if you need to revert back to a prior version, you can do that. And finally, when you're done with your app, you can share it either as a public link or within your organization so that people that have access to your retool account can view it and use it. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments below. Uh, you can also bring them to our community forum at community.retool.com. Thank you and have a great day.